Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers from Melbourne, Australia. Now today I'm going to attempt to give this number K3B, it's a king size Hatra a tractor shovel that came out in 1965. And this one was donated by a fellow Victorian named Ken Stone back in June of 2019. And I'm sure it came with tyres on it. But when I dug this out to do it up, it's been on the list of things to do. I could not find the tyres. So I ended up ordering some online from recovertoy.com and had to wait a week for them to come. And then I thought I'd get into this. So having a look at it, there's some bits missing. And they're pretty awkward bits to be missing too. They're tiny little sort of fake hydraulic rams made of plastic and metal. And they're supposed to keep the arm up straight in the air. So I'm going to have to try and make some replacements. The base is held on with a tab on the front. Uh, actually, no, I think that's the rear. And a couple of rivets at the front here. One of those big rivets is actually the underside of the rotating turntable that has the bucket and the arm on the front. That's that one there, I believe. Uh, could be wrong there. <laughs> it looks different upside down. Anyway, I'm going to take these rivets out, just the barest amount of metal again as usual so that hopefully I can just snap it back together when the time comes now that thing there seriously that drill only turned about one and a half turns and the bucket assembly fell off just completely jettisoned off the front there so I mean that's good I like them coming apart easy I don't like to struggle with things and it means that we can make haste now as usual I'm going to take that plastic out and try and clean the paint off of it and give it a bit of a polish so I've got to drill that rivet out in the roof using this special drill that's got a shallow cut on it. I'll show you in a minute. The idea is I don't drill through the roof. It removes the material of the plastic first before the metal, so hopefully the plastic just drops out. There's a close-up of it. You can see it's been modified. It's not as pointy as a normal drill. Now this is always fraught with danger. Uh, you have to sometimes lever these things out especially when the model's been painted because the paint can actually act as a glue and get in between the model and the plastic and glue it into position. This one came out relatively easy um, by comparison of some that I've, I've had to deal with. Now this wheel on the back here is also glued into position by paint but it's also held by this little rivet post here so I'm going to grind the base off and try and pull that off so I can paint strip this model. Now I'm having a good look at this here. The, that black square thing in the front is called a hydra sleeve and it's supposed to keep that bucket in position but it's all floppy at the moment. So I'm going to try and tighten that up and I've got to try and replace these missing, there's a missing pivot point there or pin. Now this is the the base, the chassis, whatever you call it. I'm going to take these wheels off again so I can paint strip this model without melting the wheels. Now these wheels are typically, well they're 60 years old. When did this model come out again? 1965. So these wheels typically are jammed on with corrosion, um, whatever, old age. But I'll give it my best shot. i use this Dremel attachment to try and remove the rivet end of the the axle and it didn't work too well so I ended up having to cut these axles to get them off so I could then work on them to separate the wheels so I've given myself a bit of a job there I've got to make up some new axles now as well as everything else now when I was pulling this apart this bucket assembly on arm I took loads of photos of it because I wanted to know exactly how to put it back together it's a very fiddly construction and you'll see later on that it took me like two hours to put it back together, just that, that front piece. So looking at this, you can see all the thick paint that someone's put on here before. Probably a kid who didn't like the colour yellow. I cut my hand there too. I don't, I'm not too sure when I did that, but I noticed it the next day. I thought I had a splinter in the palm and when I looked I had a little cut. So there's this, that was a bit of a surprise. I'm using this paint stripper gel from the local hardware shop and spread it on with a, a spare paintbrush that I've got. 
and I just leave it to do its stuff. I put the lid on the container there to try and keep the fumes in and it makes it work a little bit more efficiently. Now after about half an hour I take it out into the, the spare bathroom sink and uh, using a new toothbrush here, a new pink toothbrush. The old one was getting the bit. I think Julie might have thrown the old one out. Anyway, this is a new toothbrush. It's working well. You can see the paint is just falling off this model. Well, most of it is. There's some little bits that are sticking still. But that's quite common. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. I must remember to clean this sink though. I've got to give this sink a wipe down afterwards because that could cause me loss of sleep, especially if I'm having to sleep in the spare room. That bucket, the paint was quite thick in the bucket there, you saw that. It comes out eventually. And as always, I give it a final inspection now before I give it an undercoat. And I just double check that there's no scraps left hanging, and there are. It's a bit above the door there and there's little bits around the, in the corners of the casting which is quite common so to get this off of out of the grill there I use a little wire brush and scrub it vigorously to clean that off this chip here looks like it's ready to fall off but in actual fact it's on there pretty solid check this out so these dental tools are great if you haven't got any I suggest you get some Look at this, they can get right inside all these little hard to reach pieces. I mean, that's like a mouth, isn't it there? I'm just cleaning some plaque off of a, a tooth. This soft brass bristled rifle cleaning brush is ideal for these models because you can, it's got a thin end and a fat end and you can get it into all these tiny little crevices and uh, makes it a little bit easier. Now I noticed at this stage that this had a bit of a lean on it. The mudguard on the side there was bent up. Somebody probably stood on it once in the sand pit or something. Uh, I'm very, very carefully just straightening it with these pliers. I'm mindful that this metal is not too pliable. And if you have to move it more than a few degrees, you're best to heat it up. But in this instance, I didn't have to, which was good. Now for some Tamiya Fine Grey Primer, Light Grey. Give all the body parts, or just all the parts in general, a nice medium coat of this stuff. Hides some of the imperfections of the metal, pinholes, etc. Little tiny dints. Well, this was handy, these toothpicks were the exact right diameter for holding some of these parts. So a combination of the toothpick and the hemostats, those uh, tweezers there that lock together, made it quite easy to hold these and twirl them around whilst I'm painting to get 100% coverage. Now here's some details, the radiator and headlights there, and it's got Hatra, the brand name of the vehicle. In tiny letters on the front is a door handle. The bucket is quite well defined. It looks really nice with those teeth on, on the front cutting edge. And there you can see underneath it says King Size Number K3. And as I said before, this is a K3B because there was a K3A and a K3C apparently. Now here's my preliminary drawing for making a plastic ram printing it on my 3D printer. Basically I found out that using the 3D designing software everything's made up of basic shapes. So this RAM is basically a rectangle or half a cube, a cylinder and another shallow cylinder. And when they're joined together they make a plastic hydraulic sleeve I guess you could call it. Here's the two types. One's got a rectangular end, the other one was the Mark II version where I put a radius on the end of the rectangle to make it look a little bit more matchboxy. 
like a professional's done it instead of me being the amateur and uh, on the other end of the rod there's those other little black parts and you'll see when I put this back together how it all works and I must admit it was very difficult for me to source photographs off the internet to find out where these actually connected to and I did struggle trying to make sense of it all but I got there in the end I'm using these blind rivets and this one's actually a little bit skinny after I test fit it together I actually went with a thicker one slightly thicker shaft now I'm just showing you here the depth I've drilled into this 3d printed sleeve so I've printed in that that far I don't know a couple of centimeters but it gives me plenty of scope for the range of movement of the arms of the bucket on the front there and that's what the other end is going to look at. I've just got to cut these aluminium tubing rods to length and assemble it. I'm showing you here I could have 3D printed these items with a hole in the middle but I decided against it and thought I would drill my own to the correct depth and it was surprisingly easy although it was a little bit difficult getting them 100% central but I didn't want it to be too weak I felt if I uh, weakened it by printing a, a hollow right the way through it it wouldn't be so strong now I'm going to paint the whole model with this orange paint Mr Hobby water based acrylic just always give my air gun a bit of squirt of thinners just to start the ball rolling and here we go first coat of the day so I generally go all over the model with a, a light coat and by the time I get round to repainting it with a, a heavier coat the first coat's dried and the second coat goes on I, I don't pause I just keep going until I've done one coat then two coats the second one I go on fairly heavy moderately heavy to try and get it a nice shiny finish and that's all of the parts painted orange I'll set those aside to dry and whilst I'm waiting I can clean this plastic windscreen hopefully and get some of this paint off now I've used brake fluid in the past and I've had a lot of luck with it can't remember who gave me the idea it's a suggestion someone came up with there's two types dot three and dot four I can never remember which one is the right one to use I'm thinking at this stage it's probably not this one because this paint is not really being it could just be the paint as well don't forget it's not not reacting too well to the brake fluid so I try something else I immerse the plastic in some airbrush thinners I don't want to use anything too harsh in case it makes the plastic go opaque I know the airbrush thinners are water based they do have a little bit of odor but not much and I'm just experimenting here to see if there's an alternative to the brake fluid that didn't work too well and it, I wouldn't say it was easy to do it was a little bit time consuming but the paint did eventually come off and I'm left with a clean canvas here well except for that little bit there but once I've removed that I've got a clean canvas to put some of the clear floor shine on and hopefully make it sparkle sometimes you get really good results sometimes you get average results before I put the floor polish on I use some auto sole aluminium polish and a cotton bud just to buff out some of those minor scratches on there finish off with a soft paper cloth it's not a million dollar finish but it, it can be improved upon with the as I said before the long life self shining floor polish you've probably got a similar product where you live I can only say you're gonna have to experiment with anything that has self shining floor polish in the description and I hope it works for you here I'm just trying to get out some of the excess product there but if I just sit it down on this square of paper towel there gravity 
will do its job and drain in the corners of the windscreen there where it was a little bit heavier than normal that will drain away and be wicked away by the paper towel hopefully now these wheels very ordinary I wished I'd bought new I didn't realize they were so chewed up and paint painted so heavily and anyway because I had joy a little bit of joy before with the the paint thinners I tried it again and sure enough these wheels came clean but in the process they looked very dull and washed out they're supposed to be bright red plastic so I used some of this Mr Hobby gloss red in my airbrush and I've got this little stand I got on wish.com or somewhere like that it's absolutely useless for anything else other than this really lightweight stuff it's got a sucker on the bottom of it but it doesn't stick to my workbench so it just floats around everywhere but if you hold it and you're careful with it it can it does have its uses now I've painted the model and I'm in the process of reassembling it uh, this is obviously the spare wheel on the rear of the vehicle and I just use a ball pane hammer to tap the end of that pin in to secure that into position now as I'm going with this model you will see it takes so much manhandling to put it all back together that I start inadvertently damaging it and there's wear and tear showing on the edges already little chips here and there and although I'm going as carefully as I can right here I'm just doing a test fit to see how it fits every time I do something like that I chip a little bit of paint off now with the naked eye I didn't really notice it although occasionally I saw a little bit here and there and I'm thinking hmm, I'm gonna to have to touch that up afterwards but as it happens at the end of the day I wasn't very happy with the paint finish and I ended up stripping the whole thing back and redoing it again which was very very annoying and probably has contributed to why this video is nearly two days later than normal not only that it took me two hours listen to that that was with a 20 minute break in between <laughs> to put this back together it's like a Chinese puzzle and I found it extremely difficult and I did it multiple times and got it wrong I broke a couple of my plastic rams and had to 3d print some new ones and of course inevitably there was some damage occurring to the paint finish which resulted in me having to bite the bullet I got it this far I had to fix this thing on by peening over all these ends of these pivot posts all I wanted to do at this stage is just get it in one piece to stop it falling apart so I've done that and now you can see there's chips all over it I'm gonna to have to touch it up with a paintbrush and make it look good which is something I don't usually have to do but this model is so intricate and complicated that it was not as easy as I thought it would be so I did my test fitting and now I am gluing the windscreen in with a little bit of silicon I actually wished I hadn't done this at this stage because like I said when I sat back and looked at it when I thought I was nearly finished I actually decided it's not good enough and I had to pull it apart and that included removing this windscreen which was not easy and I had to remove the spare wheel on the back now what I didn't do is I didn't remove these and the reason I didn't remove these is because I because I'd cut the axles to separate the wheel I had no way of fitting them back together again so I kind of cheated here and something that I uh, makes me recoil in horror when I think about gluing models back together but today I did it I'm not proud of it if I had more time I may have gone and got some material where I could have made some longer axles from but I didn't have time so I just mixed up some Araldite Rapid which is a two-part epoxy resin and I put one big blob in between the joins of the axle that I cut 
and again in the back there. If I'd had a bit of tubing, I could have fed those into a little bit of tubing and it would have looked a lot better, a lot more professional, but I, I don't have any. Anyway, take a look at this. When I uh, had stripped this back the second time, after I wasn't happy with the paint finish, I noticed that one of these was missing. I don't know what they are, but they're on the, on the back there. And I didn't notice the first time round, but this time I thought, someone's going to mention it. And that always annoys me if I miss something and they go, oh, did you notice that this was bent or this was missing? So I thought, this ain't going to be easy, but I'm going to try and fix it. And I just came up with a plan where I'll just drill a little hole. I've center punched it there in the, as close to the center as I could to, as a guide for my drill. And I'm drilling right the way through. And I've got that little axle post that I'm going to cut to length and super glue in with some super glue and baking soda. That's old school for me. Haven't done that for a few years. Oh, well, no, probably over a year. I don't think I've used super glue and baking powder, but this reminded me it's what a good good idea it is it's because it's really good like a chemical weld and that's precisely what was needed here and after it was glued in position i just made the end of it slightly tapered to try and resemble the original one then i masked off the wheels that were on the base and i resprayed the base and the top put the windscreen back in put the rear spare tire back on and touched up this bucket and arm assembly and I also smartened up the ends of the axles by taking them into my shed and using my drill press just to try and mushroom the ends over a little bit more naturally rather than the peened look and it turned out not too bad so there was light at the end of the tunnel all that was left now to do was to place these homemade stickers on which I must say to Matchbox if you're listening and you're probably not these are the worst stickers you've ever had on a model. They are so boring. A plain font, black on white, and they go on the doors. And, you know, they, they could have gone crazy with it, but maybe that's what the original vehicle looked like. I don't know, but they're so fiddly. I've got hardly any nails left, thanks to this hobby. This first one I put on was a little bit too wide for my liking. You'll see the camera change here. It will shrink in diameter, uh, in width. That's slightly thinner. Uh, once again, I downloaded some photos off the internet for comparison, and that's exactly where they go, and that's exactly the size they should be. So now we have the final reveal. Now, I really was excited about doing this model. I had been on my to-do list for quite a while. I couldn't find the wheel, the tires. I had to order some new ones. I have since found them, by the way. I found them today when I was cleaning up. Anyway, these are reproduction tyres on here. It's the Mr. Hobby Orange I've chosen. My only uh, self-criticism is I sprayed the whole thing with a top coat of clear varnish. Made the windscreen go a little bit dull. Uh, but never mind, you learn from your mistakes. I can always pull it apart if I get a reproduction windscreen and fix that up. Anyway, overall, I'm quite pleased with it, especially underneath here. It looks like it's been untouched. And that's because it snapped back together by using moderate pressure, the same pressure it took to pull it apart. So it's good enough to hold. I can hold it up by the, by the bucket and it doesn't fall apart. And yet in the future, if I want to replace that windscreen, I can just pop it apart with my hands and virtually use no tools. And there you can see I've tightened up that hydro sleeve at the front and the bucket can now change its angle and remain where you want it to be. Here's a close-up of those rams. In hindsight, the ends should have been silver, but I'm not going to lose sleep over that because I'm just happy that I managed to get it all back together again. And now it's on display on my shelf with all of the others. So I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Until next week, this is Marty saying thank you so much for watching. I hope it was worth the wait, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.